a Walmart in Ohio en route for me to defend my title at the Arnold Strongman Classic. And I need to do a grocery shop for three days to feed the world's strongest man. Let's find out how much does it cost to feed me per day and what I would need to pick up for a trip for a few days away. Stay tuned and let's find out the total. So dinners are sort of my open-ended meals. I have some type of carb, some type of protein, and some type of vegetable. So we'll get a couple of packs of potatoes. We're shopping for three days right now. Asparagus, I find them tasty. You put a bit of oil, put them in the oven, and usually they are pretty good. I think that probably does us for the vegetable section. We'll find a pre-made salad, uh, but let's head over to meat and see what we can get there. Always good to have a couple of steaks on hand. Definitely a big fan of red meat, always. So we'll get some ground beef as well. That's gonna be used for lunches, ground beef, rice, chicken broth for lunch. Uh, but that should have dinner sorted after we get some chicken breast. Just normal chicken breast will be fine. We get a couple of those and should be plenty of food. So dinner sorted. We got steak, we got chicken, we got a couple of vegetable options, we got carbs. We're gonna pick up some rice, which is gonna be used for lunch as well. Uh, then we'll just have to make sure that we've got some stuff for breakfast uh, and uh, make sure that we can have some stuff on the go for lunch if we were to prep some ground beef. We're at the Arnold Strongman Classic 2024 where I'm looking to defend my title and what you're watching me shop for. If you want a chance to win a signed competition shirt from myself, follow the link in the description. And if you want to support LHBK, we have free US shipping going on all weekends. All right, I have put OJ and plain Greek yogurt on the map. We're gonna need quite a bit of orange juice. We'll grab that from over there, but we can get our plain Greek yogurt from here as well. Personally, when I'm getting it, whether it's 0% or 1%, it doesn't really matter to me. What you wanna look out for though, is you always want it to be plain. If you go like a low fat, low fat vanilla, we got 26 grams of carbs, 21 grams of sugar in that. And if we go to like just a standard plain Greek yogurt, nine grams of carbs, six grams of sugar, none of that sugar is added in. So much better here. I think all things being equal, I'd want a one or two percent fat content because no fat's gonna take out some nutrients. But when you're on the move, sometimes it's easier just to take the first thing that you see. So we're sorted there. All right, so we definitely need a big boy orange juice for three days. I'll probably have more than this, but that'll be a good start anyways. And sometimes it's hard to drink enough OJ for me. Now, one thing here, they'll put orange juice and orange juice alternatives together. Sunny D, this is not orange juice. All you want in your ingredient list is oranges. All right, rounding out breakfast a bit, we're gonna get a few dozen eggs, not one with gunk on the side. Love it. So it'll be 36 eggs. We got a few people staying with us, so it's not just for me. But three dozen eggs should have us sorted, I would imagine, for a few days. Uh, now, we gotta get milk for protein shakes. And we are almost there. Um, with milk, same argument as with yogurt. If you get skim, it's gross, but it's also losing a lot of nutritional value that you can get from milk with some fat in it. So say if I'm looking, we've got 2% and we've got full f or, uh, skim milk, 1%, 2%, always my shout. Whole milk is a bit heavy for me, um, but if I was thinking nutritionally, having a small amount of whole milk would be way better than having a larger amount of 2% milk, just impractical if you're trying to make a shake with whole milk because you need to use so much. I'm an absolute Diet Coke superstar. So that's a mandatory. In terms of other hydration, water's good. I've got Hydra Splash by Perfect Sports. That's good for electrolytes, B6, B12, general replenishment. Um, otherwise, 
Diet Coke protein shakes. Half my meals are liquid, and that counts in your daily liquid intake. So not a huge concern of mine, sort of in a lot of regards, but Diet Coke, very, very useful. I'm not a big flavor guy, but we're gonna get some lemon pepper for the chicken. We're gonna get some taco seasoning for the beef. Uh, underrated on how much seasoning your food a little bit can help it go down. Um, taco seasoning on the beef for me makes it really easy. Sometimes I will battle through lunch for an hour and a half if it's not seasoned well. Um, so we should be good there. Uh, now just oil to cook and then, uh, and then snacks. Bit of olive oil, light taste, whatever that means, but should get us sorted. All right, now when it comes to my lunches, I have rice every day, usually in my rice cooker. That's totally impractical on the road. And I find it even impractical to do like water rice mix, make it in the morning. So this minute rice is perfect. Now, I work with Stan Efforting, nutrition legend, and he recommends me white rice over ground rice because it digests a little bit faster. I also mix it with my ground beef which that mixes in your stomach and when you have a high fat content meat, it slows down the digestion of everything else. So even though it's a white rice, it's still gonna digest fairly slow. Two of these will be one lunch for me. So we've got three lunches there and over three days, I anticipate having five lunches. I should have six, but I know that I'll get hung up and have a protein shake for at least one of those. Um, so that should be the staple of our meals. For breakfast, we've got bread, eggs, we've got protein shake back in the car. We've got OJ and Greek yogurt that makes for a good solid breakfast. For lunch, we've got ground beef, chicken, and rice. For dinners, we've got steak, chicken, a couple of vegetable options, and potatoes. Couple that with the protein in my car, the milk to mix that. It's a really good start. Now we gotta get some logistics done, just how to cook it. And then we're gonna finish up with snacks, which when I'm in America, I love to check out what they got for snacks and uh, operate very much on the 80-20 rule. But let's see what they got. See if we have some fun. Okay, snack time. Now, for snack time, comment your number one snack or your country's number one snack. And maybe as I make my way around, I could give those a shot. You're gonna find out some of my favorite snacks now. Uh, we're gonna go something neutral temperature, something cold, and that should get us sorted. Wow. All right, gotta love America. Reese's would be my favorite snack, or Reese's, as Americans call them. So we're gonna give Reese's popcorn a try. That looks great. Okay, now cold. For cold, we have to go ice cream. For every person out there who's lactose intolerant, I got your lactase enzymes, so I apologize. I could eat two liters of ice cream a night, no problem at all, and go to bed completely happy. Stomach wouldn't be upset at all. Now, caveat for ice cream, for me, always has to be vanilla based. It can have anything in it, so long as it's based as vanilla. Chocolate ice cream, it just feels like rich. It feels like you need a glass of milk after. So we're gonna find some vanilla based ice cream to satisfy the craving, wherever that may be. Those look nice. Bit of Walmart chocolate, or walnut chocolate chip action. Caught my eye on the way to get ice cream. Now, within 80-20 rule, there's also just simple calories in, calories out. When I'm off competing, it's hard to get the calories in that I need, and energy expenditure is gonna be much higher than usual. So, this is in no way nutrition, uh, nutritionist, uh, in no way micronutrient dense. Uh, it's strictly just to get a few extra calories in and something that tastes really good and something I enjoy for a little bit of a reward after a day of hard work. One rule I have for myself though is I'll always get a bar rather than a tub because if I get a tub that's gone immediately seating one. So I'm thinking these are looking nice. Uh, they look so nice someone's already taken one. <laughs> There we go. That looks beautiful. That looks right up my alley. All right. And I think that is us. That is, for the most part, three days of what I need to pick up. We're gonna head over to the checkout. Feel free to guess how much you think this will cost. What does it cost to feed the world's strongest man? It might surprise you. It's not as much as you would think, but probably twice as much as whatever your food bill is. So let's head up and check out what this is gonna cost me.
Grand total feeding the world's strongest man for three days. We got 205 US dollars. It's about $70 a day. That'd be slightly higher than what I'm used to just because we had to pick up things that you need to cook, like the, uh, like the oil and whatnot. But pretty good representation. Let me know. Is that more or less or about what you thought? Otherwise, go ahead, click the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.